Why do we encourage you to fast? We encourage you to fast to get into ketosis so that you can break down fat to get alternative energy to glucose and that is ketone bodies. Now the question always comes up, what is the difference between ketosis and ketoacidosis? The diabetic ketoacidosis. That is the essence of the video today. So join us as we break down ketosis and diabetic ketoacidosis. Coming up. Now, when you have diabetes type 1, that means that your auto it's an autoimmune that your immune cells are targeting the pancreatic cells that produce insulin and these are the beta cells. Now, once your own immune cells start targeting your body cells, which are the pancreatic beta cells, then you start having a deficiency in insulin production. And therefore, the amount of insulin that you start producing through your pancreas will be limited. And therefore, it will be hard for you to start controlling your rising amounts of blood sugar levels. Because remember, this insulin is produced in response to the rising amounts of blood glucose after you consume a meal that is rich in carbohydrates okay so the best way to uh, manage type 1 diabetes is basically to avoid uh, carbohydrates because those are the ones that will cause a demand or an increase in blood insulin level so what is dka dka in full is diabetic ketoacidosis now acidosis just means a drop in ph so you're producing ketone bodies that will cause a drop in blood ph and that will lead you to all these severe conditions that bring about DKA. So DKA is a medical emergency for those who have type 1 diabetes. Again, type, uh, DKA can also occur, uh, but in limited uh, numbers in people who have diabetes type 2. Now, DKA basically uh, is severe lack of insulin. So we have a defect in the pancreas and therefore we get to a severe lack of insulin and this lack of insulin will actually lead us to the pathophysiology meaning how the disease progresses so for us in this channel what we do is we tackle how diseases happen then we tackle dietary modifications to help you either prevent or recover from already happening diseases so how does dka come to occur now the pathophysiology of dka is basically insufficient production of insulin you either are producing very limited insulin in the pancreas and that amount of insulin is not enough to help you pump the glucose that you have in the blood towards uh, the cells for either utilization or storage as fat energy now remember if you have limited insulin then your body will have to readjust and how does it readjust because now we don't we are not pumping these rising amounts of glucose in blood into cells to help us uh, get the energy or to store that as fat energy then the body will start producing things that are called counter regulatory hormones and counter regulatory hormones their role is just to pump energy or glucose into the bloodstream these hormones are produced in the morning that's why most of you don't feel hungry in the morning so uh, the three which is uh, growth hormone we have cortisol growth hormone and glucagon these are the three counter regulatory hormones that are produced in the morning to help you pump glucose into your system and what they do is they activate the liver to start lipolysis so breakdown of fat also they activate gluconeogenesis and also glycogenolysis gluconeogenesis to mean just sourcing glucose from other sources that are not carbohydrates and uh, glycogenolysis means breaking down glycogen to give you glucose so all this energy in form of glucose is being pumped in blood that will cause a severe rise in blood glucose levels. Remember, this is not an alternative energy. We already have glucose in our system and we are aiming at utilizing that glucose in the system before we get any other source of energy. However, in this case, we have a rising amount of glucose in the system, but we are still having a rising amount of counter-regulatory hormones for a reason because you're not producing insulin and therefore the body thinks that we need uh, more glucose in the system because remember insulin is an anti-lipolytic hormone so it prevents a uh, breakdown of fat to give you glucose or ketone bodies so now that we don't have this insulin that means we have to break down the fat to get more insulin uh, more glucose and that's what the liver is doing through these counter regulatory hormones so we are breaking fat from the fat cells to give you ketones and uh, glucose 
We're also breaking down any other source of storage of uh, energy like protein to give you also glucose. And again, we still have a rising amount of glucose in the system because it is not being pumped into cells. Because remember, the function of insulin is to open up the gates so that the glucose in blood flows into the cells to either be used as energy or stored as fat. And since we have a deficiency in insulin, then automatically the glucose levels are not going down. So what happens after you get these counter-regulatory hormones? Three things. The characteristics of DKA. Number one, hyperglycemia. So definitely, because we are eating carbohydrates and we don't have insulin, then blood glucose levels start to rise. So that, that is hyperglycemia. Number two, ketosis. We are breaking down our, our fat in the fat cells through counter-regulatory hormones to give you uh, energy and to give you ketone bodies. And those three ketone bodies are acetone, we have acetone, we have beta hydroxybutyrate, and when we have acetoacetone. So we have acetone, acetoacetone, and beta hydroxybutyrate. These three are the ketone bodies that we produce anytime we break down fat through ketosis. Remember, these are very helpful to you. However, in this case, we don't need them. Why don't we need them? We already have hyperglycemia, so we needed to break down this glucose to give you ATP, but we are not doing that because we don't have insulin. Now, we are again breaking down fat to get these three uh, ketone bodies that are rising in your bloodstream. And these ketone bodies are highly acidic, so they lower the pH of blood. Once they lower the pH of blood, then the physiology of blood becomes acidic, and that is what we call acidosis. So characteristic number three of ketoacidosis then becomes acidosis because of the ketone bodies. So you're not breaking down glucose to get ATP or pumping it into cells to give you energy or be stored. So we rise blood glucose in uh, the glucose levels in blood. That is hyperglycemia. Number two, we have uh, uh, counter-regulatory hormones breaking down fat to give you uh, ketone bodies. They start rising in blood. Ketone bodies are highly acidic and therefore they start lowering the pH of blood that takes them to acidity. And therefore the physiology in the blood becomes acidic and this affects all the cellular functions because acidic environment is toxic to your cells. Then, since we have this ketone bodies dropping the pH, and then we head into acidosis. And some of the, actually most of the symptoms that occur uh, in DKA are because of the acidosis. And these are the symptoms like causal respiration. Those who know causal respiration, basically it means you're breathing so fast and rapidly because you want to clear the acidosis in the system. It's a compensation mechanism. So the body is designed when it goes into acidosis, then you breathe faster so that your respiration rate goes up and you clear acidosis. So your body is struggling to clear this acidosis through causal respiration or a frequent and uh, uh, increased breathing rates. Number two, frequent urination because of dehydration. So you're getting this frequent urination and you get things thirsty. Once you clear these fluids in your system, you start getting thirsty. That's a symptom also. We also have abdominal pain and nausea and vomiting. These are the symptoms that come are reported from these people who have DKA, okay? We also have a fruity taste. Now, that fruity taste from the mouth is because of acetone. Acetone, actually, uh, it was used, and it's, I guess it's still used to test for diabetes because if you have diabetes and you might end up in DKA, then you're producing ketone bodies, and these ketone bodies have a fruity taste. So they have a very sweet taste that comes from the mouth. That's because of, that's because of acetone. And then above all, we have dehydration, and this dehydration can lead to kidney problems. And when you get to kidney problems, then automatically you cannot control your blood pressures, you'll get into heart attack and you can die. Okay, so this is a health emergency and it's very serious. So we cannot uh, even afford to uh, compare this to ketosis. We will discuss ketosis, ketosis so that you get to understand. So basically those are the symptoms and that is the process under which DKA happens, okay? Now, what is the treatment of DKA? Since it's a medical emergency, what are we treating? Remember, we are dehydrated, so we have to rehydrate with fluids so that these people get uh, adequate kidney function. Then again, insulin therapy is very important because remember, in this, we have limited amount of insulin. And therefore, your cells might still be receptive to insulin, so there must be there might be sensitivity to insulin. So if you give insulin therapy, then your, your, your cells start to open up the gates so that this rising blood sugar levels, the hyperglycemia, disappears because it goes into cells and gets activity. Uh, or being converted to energy so that the cells use it. So that's the reason why we give insulin. And then again, we have to correct electrolyte, uh, electrolyte balance because you once you urinate, you're losing a lot of sodium, you're getting imbalance in potassium, and you want and bicarbonates because of acidosis. 
So you want to balance this bicarbonates, the potassium and the sodiums so that you go back to a normal physiology. So again, you have to correct electrolyte dysfunction. So this electrolyte balance, sorry. So these are just the management. Uh, they don't concern the patients. These concern the healthcare because they know what to do when it comes to DKA. And then again, you treat the triggers, beat infection, beat cancer, beat pancreatic problems, beat alcohol, the diet. You have to treat that. Once you treat that, then DKA starts to disappear. But again, remember, prevention is better than cure. But since uh, these are type 1 diabetics, so they already have a kidney problem, uh, a pancreas problem, then we will, we will only uh, encourage treatment. Then after that, when they recover, we can start dietary modifications that help them uh, recover. If they're children, you can actually assist them to get over type 1 diabetes. Because once you drop a carbo the carbohydrate intake or carbohydrate diet is zero, then these children start surviving on only keto diets and uh, uh, basically protein and vegetables. Okay, And once they do that in animal fat, once they do that, then their pancreas start to rejuvenate. They start to catch up. And then there, uh, because their pancreas have rapidly multiplying cells, that means children have a higher chance of recovering from type 1 than uh, the elderly. For the elderly, we only manage through dietary modification and insulin. But however, if you maintain a steady dietary discipline, then you might end up tapering down on insulin levels, uh, insulin injections, and then move out of that. So that is DKA. How about ketosis or ketogenesis? Okay, so we tell you to fast because of ketosis and ketogenesis. So ketosis is the normal functioning or physiology of the body. The reason why I'm saying that is in DKA, we have hyperglycemia because we don't have insulin. But in ketosis, you actually do not have glucose because one, you're limiting yourself from eating carbohydrates and therefore the body turns an alternative to alternative energy mechanism, which is fat. So ketosis is an alternative body energy machinery. So you're getting ketone bodies. These are being gotten to help you fuel the body activities. So it is not that you already have glucose and you're topping up to this because you will not need this if at all you have glucose. Okay, so that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to block you from glucose intake. Once you block carbohydrates intake, and that's the reason why ketosis only happens when you're fasting, when you're on keto diets, or when you, are, you have a condition that uh, basically does not allow an intake of uh, carbohydrates. Okay? okay, so when you're fasting, when you have a keto diet and you have a zero carb diet, or even an infection, so that is when ketosis happens. Okay, so now ketosis is an alternative energy to glucose. Please mark that. We are not topping up on energy that you already have. When you fast, you're blocking yourself from consuming food and carbohydrates. That means you will not need insulin. So insulin levels are low. And when insulin levels are low, then your body will, try, will convert uh, the fat cells, uh, the energy stored in cells as fat, the energy stored in the liver as uh, glyco uh, glycogen, start breaking it down to give you ketone bodies. So that is the difference. In this, we still have glucose, but you are adding up an alternative energy. So it's becoming a double burden to the body to clear the glucose and clear the ketone bodies. But in ketosis, we don't have the glucose and therefore we are turning to alternative sources of energy which are healthy for you. So they'll produce ketone bodies that can be converted into energy to help you recover, to help you survive. And these are the best energy sources when they're used on your own without the glucose. So the reason why you're going into DKA is because you have high levels of glucose and then you're adding high levels of uh, ketone bodies but if you're fasting if you let's say like people who are starving also you're getting into ketosis because you don't not, you, you're actually changing the energy uh, mechanism from glucose intake or carbohydrates to now breaking down fat so actually this trains your body to uh, tap energy sources that are in the fat and this is very important uh, for your survival okay so that is the difference between the two now in summary basically what i'm saying is dka is a life-threatening condition of diabetes type 1 Sometimes type 2, and it's characterized by hyperglycemia, ketosis, and acidosis. So ketosis will lead you to acidosis, and therefore you'll get all the symptoms that I mentioned about uh, uh, DKA. On the other hand, ketosis is just a normal physiological mechanism that provides you energy alternatively to glucose intake. So if you don't have glucose intake, then you turn to ketosis to get energy. So that is the difference. So do not confuse the two. Now, as I end this video there is a portion that is also an emergency an emergency or an emergency, emergency situation in type 2 diabetes and that we would call hhs it is called hyposmolar hyperglycemic state now hhs is actually similar to dka 
only that in HHS we do not have ketone bodies. So we do not break down fat to get ketone bodies. If they are there, they are very minimal. So in this one, there is always a rise in blood sugar levels to a level that is 33.0, a maximum of 33.0 millimoles per liter. That is very high, okay? So HHS is actually a serious medical emergency. Now, funny enough, is HHS is managed in hospital as an inpatient and the same way we manage DKA is the same way we manage HHS through insulin therapy, through rehydration and all that, okay? And electrolyte rate balance. So it is the same. However, this is for type 2 a diabetes, okay? And the characteristics of this is severe dehydration. So these people will come with very severe dehydration and they're even going to kidney failure because of that dehydration. They will come with a high levels of uh, blood sugar. If you test their blood, they have like almost 33.0 millimoles or per liter of uh, this blood glucose. That's a high amount. And remember, hyperglycemia, which is basically also hyperinsulinemia, will cause you kidney problems, is affecting your brain, is affecting your nerves, is affecting your heart, is affecting your muscular function. So generally, sugar is dangerous and sugar levels of 33 are super high. And that is one characteristic of HHS. Then again, it's altered mental state. That's why you, when, when these people come confused or irritable, this is because you're altering their function of the brain and also you're altering their nerve uh, function. So HHS is a type 2 emergency. DKA is a type 1, but sometimes type 2. But this one is based on type 2, okay? And this is because of insulin resistance. And this is also because of insufficient production of insulin. And again, also as a result of uh, dietary carbohydrate intake. So you can realize, you can already start to imagine how bad sugar and carbohydrate in your diet is. We do not have any essential carbohydrates. The way we have essential proteins and amino acids, essential trace elements and minerals, and essential fat, we do not have daily minimum requirement of carbohydrates. So when we tell you to drop carbohydrates or to concentrate on complex carbohydrates, it's because we understand that complex carbohydrates will be broken down slowly and therefore they will not cause insulin resistance or a rise in or a spike in insulin levels. But if you keep consuming those processed foods and those simple carbohydrates, then chances of you getting into HHS are very high because once you get into insulin resistance, then this is uh, will start to end soon. Okay? So unlike DKA, HHS is for type 2 and it doesn't uh, come as a result of breakdown of fat to give you ketone bodies. So this one, ketone bodies are absent. But in DKA, we have ketosis and ketone bodies are present. So just that is just the difference. But this is just a highlight. The major part is the confusion that happens between DKA and ketosis. So since we've cleared that, now we can rest and keep discussing diabetes. See you in the next.